today, but all eyes on FMCG sector. Absolutely, Cheryl, you know, we have had actually a real host of earnings last week as well and one of them uh, was Marico, which reported its numbers as well. Overall, uh, you know, when you look at the numbers in terms of that, it was like a subdued set of numbers coming in from the company and you know, margin pressure is something that had continued for most FMCG companies and even for Marico as well. Now, you know, let's uh, bring on board. We do have uh, Saugata Gupta, who is the managing uh, director and CEO of the company to get uh, more insights on what happened in the earnings and what is the growth outlook going forward as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Gupta for joining with us on the show today. It's a pleasure having you on the show. So, you know, so I'm firstly going to start by talking about the demand scenario. How was the current demand scenario, consumer sentiment? How was it different from last year as well? Especially we did have the third wave coming in in the second half of the quarter as well. So what is the current demand trends now that you're seeing coming in? So I think uh, if you have to look at uh, from a, you know, a three different lenses. First of all, I think... Uh, it's true for the industry and especially for us. We are also lapping a very high base. So if you look at quarter three and quarter four of 2021, was, uh, we had a volume growth of, you know, 15 and 24 percent respectively. So therefore, some of the so-called slowdown is also optical. Having said that, yes, there is a slowdown in trend, especially in rural. If you look at quarter three overall, you know, Nielsen numbers as far as the FMCG category is concerned, some of it could be attributed to I think, uh, you know, what I call inflation, whenever there is inflation, there is uh, obviously titration of FMCG. Uh, some of it also could be attributed to now that everything has opened up, uh, obviously there are other avenues of spending. So having said that, I believe that uh, things are going to uh, uh, you know, be better as we move into the next year, quarter one and quarter two. As far as Omicron, the third wave is concerned, while it led to some productivity led issues, given the fact it was short and uh, it had a quick peak and a quick decline. I don't think there has been any, other than some short-term disruptions, there hardly been any significant disruptions. So I think it's been now business as usual. Uh, and I believe that uh, the only factor that is going to play a part is how soon inflation comes down. Having said that, I think we are lucky because a significant portion of inflation component, which is copra, is already on decline. And therefore, uh, going forward, uh, we will continue to see sequential margin improvement and EBITDA, EBITDA improvement getting into quarter one next year. Hi, right, Mr. Gupta, good afternoon. This is Cheryl also joining in the conversation. Let's talk about margins then. You actually mentioned about the crude price, uh, prices actually softening. So what is the margin expectations that you have for your company as well as uh, will you need to take more price highs going forward? So at, at the heart case, it's slightly different. I think, uh, see, uh, crude, uh, the I mean, the softening or the vegetable oil softening, we might see only in quarter one because now, we are always, always almost halfway through quarter four. Uh, as far as parachute is concerned, we have already taken some price drops. As regards other uh, categories, I think we have taken some marginal hikes. We'll wait and watch. It is extremely important that we continue to ensure that we maximize volume and market share over short term margins because margins will always come back. The two things we are continuing to invest behind, we'll continue to invest behind A and P and capability driving and also ensure that we protect market share as you know last quarter 94% uh, of our portfolio gained market share 95% of our portfolio gained penetration so we we'll continue to do that so we are not very concerned about margins given the fact that a primary component of our input cost copra is on the decline now right mr gupta you know one thing, you know, most FMCG companies have actually highlighted is that they're seeing a bit of a slowdown coming in in the rural growth. Now, you know, what is your outlook on the rural growth? Is that something you have witnessed as well? Yes, you are absolutely right. I think there has been some slowdown in rural growth, uh, especially in Q3. And uh, it's, a, it's a function of both optical and sequential. Having said that, if you look at uh, some of the, uh, the other factors, which is... Uh, you know, whether it's been the rainfall has been good, the crop has been good, the government continues to do direct benefit transfer in terms of Manrega and uh, the MSP. So I believe that uh, we should see 
uh, improvements coming quarter one onwards. That is because again we are also lapping uh, very very high base. So I uh, I believe it's an immediate concern, but I I believe that once the inflation uh, cools off a bit, which should happen in Q1, although it's very difficult to predict because some of the crude inflation is also because of certain external geopolitical factors which we can't influence in India. I believe that uh, once that happens, I think uh, rural growth should start improving in Q1 of next year. Mr. Gupta, let's just focus now to the uh, hair oil space and you are actually dominating the coco uh, coconut oil uh, category with about 62% uh, market share. But we are actually seeing uh, quite a few new entrants enter that particular uh, space. So with this increased competition in the hair oil space, uh, could we be in for a uh, slippery spot when it comes to your company uh, market share gain in this particular segment? So we continue to gain market share, we gained uh, 220 basis points in parachute, we gain continue to gain in all, as I said, 94% of our portfolio. I believe that uh, as long as one of the things we have done is, as we had significant input cost increase, we absorbed some of the cost, we didn't pass on everything to the consumer because we continue to provide value to the consumer during inflationary times. So uh, uh, I think uh, and we also have a very big distribution agenda in front of us. Uh, in terms of expanding direct distribution in rural and also improving some of the urban distribution and some of the uh, which will uh, you know, help the newer categories. So as long as both is done, I believe that uh, uh, I think we will continue to gain market share in spite of uh, independent of any competitive intensity. Really great to hear, Mr. Gupta. But you know, I want to talk about another segment. That's the Sapola segment of yours. Now, you've had a growth of around 19% in terms of value during this quarter. What is your growth strategy going forward over here, especially on the food business size uh, side in the Sapola segment? And you know, will you be looking at any acquisitions on the food business side? I think we have had a good start in foods, and we are on. Uh, we are very much on track of going close to the 500 crore aspiration we have set for ourselves this year. We also have an aspiration for 850 to 1000 crores. It's a broad based growth. Uh, I think we have got most of the food strategy right in terms of uh, having better execution of the innovation. Yes, uh, you will, you can expect some more, uh, I think, uh, entry into the food, some new categories sometime later this quarter or Q1 of next year. I believe that it is a great example of how do you expand the total addressable market through a power brand like Sapola. And uh, the food journey, we will continue to invest behind the food journey. And uh, this will become one of the biggest plank of our diversification of our portfolio, which we are planning in India over the next three to four years. All right, Mr. Gupta, we leave it at there. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, talking about uh, Marico's quarter gone by as well as way ahead for your company, especially in the food segment as well. And that was uh, Mr. Sagata Gupta, who is uh, uh, the Managing Director and CEO of Marico. But on that note, we'll slip into a break in this edition of uh, the newsroom. But stay tuned. When we come back, we'll get you all the stocks as well.